And now into our dinosaur of the day, Nanosaurus, which was a request from Allie, so thanks. It was an ornithischian that lived in the late Jurassic in what is now Colorado and also Wyoming, and it's often illustrated as a tiny dinosaur. There's not much known about it. It's mostly based on fossils that were later referred to Othniolosaurus, but it may have been between three and six and a half feet or one to two meters long. That's uncertain, but that's certainly not tiny. <laughs> <laughs> that's small compared to what people think of dinosaurs, but not really that small compared to a lot of the early dinosaurs. Yeah. Nanosaurus was an herbivore. It was described in 1877 by Othniel Charles Marsh, and Marsh named three species, Nanosaurus agilis, Nanosaurus victor, those two were named together, and then Nanosaurus rex, which he named later, but in the same year, 1877. Marsh also named the family Nanosauridae. Later, Nanosaurus became thought of as a Hypsilophodontid because it was small and somewhat looked like Hypsilophodon instead of Nanosauridae. The type species is Nanosaurus agilis, and the name means small or dwarf lizard. Supposedly, Marsh liked studying small dinosaurs from the Morrison Formation because Cope and his team had trouble finding them. <laughs> Oramo Lucas, a school attendant, found Nanosaurus agilis, the ilium, thigh bones, shin bones, fibula, and dentary impressions. Marsh's description of Nanosaurus agilis was very short. There were no illustrations or even information on the locality where it was found other than, quote, Mesozoic deposits of the Rocky Mountains. Oh, quote. man, that is vague. But that's kind of how it was during Bone Wars time. Mm -hmm. They Just didn't want to give rush. it up. Yeah, and to get it out as quickly as possible. He did say, though, that it was the, quote, most diminutive dinosaur yet discovered, end quote. It's possible that Marsh didn't describe the locality of Nanosaurus agilis because Oramo Lucas worked for Edward Drinker Cope. Supposedly, Marsh's assistant, Benjamin Mudge, visited Lucas, who wasn't too happy with Coke at the time, and Mudge convinced Lucas that his arrangement with Cope was only for large fossils, so yes, he could sell his small fossils to anyone, so he could sell Nanosaurus agilis to Marsh. And that sort of thing, I think, happened a lot in the Bone Wars as well, though that's one of the, more, the tamer stories. Yeah. Marsh illustrated some of the Nanosaurus agilis fossils around 1894-ish and then gave more descriptions, saying that it was very bird-like and, quote, about half as large as a domestic fowl, end quote. Nanosaurus victor was thought to be larger than Nanosaurus agilis, fox-sized versus half as large as domestic fowl or also <laughs> cat-sized. Nanosaurus rex was a little bigger than Nanosaurus agilis. I guess it depends on if you're including tails in these estimates, because if you're just going at length, then everything gets way bigger in your relations. True. But if you do it by weight or something, then, you know, it might be more like a cat. <laughs> That's very true. Marsh later renamed Nanosaurus Victor as Halipus Victor in 1881. And then in 1970, Alec Walker found that Halipus Victor was actually a small bipedal crocodilomorph, so not a dinosaur. Nanosaurus rex was known from a complete thigh bone. In 1973, Peter Galton and Jim Jensen described a partial skeleton as Nanosaurus rex. There was no head or hands or tail. And then in 1978, Peter Galton found that the rock with Nanosaurus agilis fossils had two right femora, which showed that there were two animals there. And he found that the smaller femur was Nanosaurus rex and the larger one was Nanosaurus agilis. Galton named a new family... Fabrosauridae to include Nanosaurus agilis, which were primitive ornithischians. Galton made Nanosaurus rex the type species of the Hypsilophodontid genus, Othnelia, so then Nanosaurus rex became Othnelia rex, named in honor of Marsh. I've heard of that one before. Yeah, but not everyone agreed with the existence of Fabrosauridae. In 2007, Galton suggested that Nanosaurus agilis was possibly a basal ornithopod instead. So, to sum it all up, only Nanosaurus agilis is considered a valid species. Nanosaurus rex is now Othnelia rex, and Nanosaurus victor is now the crocodilomorph Halopus victor. Well, they really got split up. Yep. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left.